accept it. I am here to return all the glory to the King of Kings who grant me successful journey from Anambra to Nasrawa on Monday. Then when I came here, I didn't saw my brothers only in good condition, but I saw them praying and fasting. But I told them that reason that we should increase the volume of the prayer, then we started using the night period also. Then on Wednesday, I was here after the communion service during the time of blood of sprinkling, the daddy in the house say that this blood of sprinkling shall serve as a mark of exemption for you, that you shall not lose anything in this remaining month of August. Then on Thursday, Satan appeared. In the night, we were in the parlor watching program after we had finished eating. Then the generator just stopped. Then my junior brother now went at backyard and saw it was a great fire. Then when he shouted, fire, 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 when we got there, it was terrible. But we were confused a bit. But when we began to call upon that name of Jesus Christ, the solution came. Because we were there trying to shift the generator from the pipe that was connected to the soccer wheel. Because that backyard was a bit stuffy and narrow. Then when we shifted it down, the fire outbursted. And started reaching to the steering. Then we began to call upon the name Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Then people came around and they put a little, a little omo in the water as they pour it down. The fire got stopped. But to my greatest surprise, the fire was touching to the steering constantly. But the steering refused to catch fire. So I am here to return all the glory to the King of Kings. Praise the Lord. In this assembly, there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus Christ. We do awesome things in your life this month. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. In this miracle marriage banquet service, Lord, do the uncommon. Amen. Visit every family. Amen. Give everyone a touch of a lifetime. Amen. Whatever is limiting your marital destiny, let them be swallowed up in this service. Amen. If you are that person, you say better amen. amen. Today, your trials will end. Amen. The embargo over your life will scatter. Amen. That place they say you will never cross, you will cross it. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whoever place a, a limit over your marriage and destiny today, they will go down. Amen. I decree they will go down. Amen. I speak with fire, they will go down. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That amen is too weak. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. Praise God. So beginning from tomorrow, we flag off the seven-day prayer and fasting. In our teaching series for all the Sunday service, our focus... Is, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? And in this service, we are looking at the founder. Understand your right to total health. Understand your right to total health. The activities of the wicked flourish where ignorance dominates. Satan operates well when you are blinded to a truth. No wonder scripture say, my people perish 
for lack of knowledge not that knowledge is not available it is available but just that they lack it what you don't understand you can't take David said the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting give me understanding and I shall live yes total health is your bat right but you need understanding to flourish in it scripture said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree You are not to be up in heads today, down in heads tomorrow. Man, I was in Delta on, on Tuesday. I met the oldest king, 100 years plus, still sitting down, still signing letter. Still signing letter. Not that he's um, uh, doing like this. With his eyes clear as his tiny letter. You must live long. Yeah. You will not only live long, you will live well. Yeah. The two is different. Oh. There's a difference between living long and living well. God wants you to live long and live well. You can live long and be pooping on the body. That's not living well. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Living long and living well is what God has ordained for you. So, understanding your right to total health is what sets the pace for your freedom from sickness. We belong to a family where everyone is ordained to be sickness free. Where we are not supposed to be tormented by hereditary sickness is our family sickness. Some people say it's their family sickness. I don't know who is your grandfather or your great-grandfather or your great-great-grandfather that you inherited the thing from. I say it's our family sickness. Whatever look like an affliction running through your family today, even this month, God will disconnect you from it. Say amen like a believer. Amen. I say God will disconnect you from that sickness. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. By redemption, scripture said, he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. In that place, in this place, you are not permitted to be tormented. You are not permitted to be afflicted. You are not permitted to experience torture of any form of affliction. You are not. You are not. So even if you are, it is time to be free. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. I say it is time to be free. Amen. So knowing what is obtainable in the kingdom where you now belong, is what guarantees you to stay free. But scripture said they know not. Neither will they understand. He said all the foundation of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods. When you know not things keep going of course.
Knowledge brings about a spiritual awakening. When you are awakened to a particular truth, it fuels a reaction. You can't react against what you don't know. You can only react to what you know. What you know fuels a reaction. You don't tolerate what is not part of you. You react against it. You don't watch sickness to go. You address them. And when you stay, when you stay finished, you go go. Now lie, you, no sickness go like that. You go, you go go with you. I hear what I'm saying now. Huh? There's nothing like a, when you stay finished, you go go. You say, I've come to collect you. Hear me? You must open your red eyes. Sickness, I curse you. Jesus said, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Sickness is an affliction. So it must not be tolerated. You don't tolerate affliction. There is something in the world that guarantees healing. That guarantees total health. And we are going to be looking at it in three different perspectives. The first service, the second service, and the third service. The first one, the word of God is surgical and medicinal. Number two, the word of God is creative. We'll take that in the second service. And in the third service, the word of God is prophetic. Say with me, prophetic. to understand this morning that only the living word can make you live. What is not living cannot make you live. Cannot keep you alive. Cannot give you life. The word has one unfailing mission. Isaiah 55 and verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing whereto I send it. It shall prosper. It shall prosper. So the mission of the world against sickness is to terminate their oppression. The mission of the world against disease is to terminate their oppression. So no matter the name of the sickness, hear it, when the word appear, they must disappear. They are not even saying amen like someone that believes. So the word cannot be limited to any location. It can assess any location. There are so much virtues in the world that any time it is released, it must empty its content to make sure that the sickness does not have a hiding place. So we look at the surgical power of the world. Every time the word is released, it carries out an operation. A sweeping operation. A cleansing operation. If you understand the fiery nature of the word, you will not stop speaking the word. Whatever look like a stubborn sickness in your body, 
It is not. It is staying stubborn because you have not acted stubborn. When you match it word for word, it must fade away. It's not my word like hammer and like fire that break it. The word has a breaking power. It will break it from the root and flush it out. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who shall am not worthy to bear? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with what? There is fire in the word. Every time the word is released, the fire for oppression goes to burn. It burns, it burns, it burns, it burns, it burns. It burns off the affliction. And you know, this kind of oppression is so smooth and quiet. It takes place unannounced. No noise. It's just walking. Sweeping. Cleansing. Purging. Flushing. Jesus said these words that I speak unto you. They are spirits. And they are life. The word has surgical power. They don't need to give you chloroform. Before it can operate you well. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? You don't need to sleep. Even these days now, if you, are, if you are taken to the theater, you don't need to sleep. You can be hearing them operating you. You can be hearing them operating you, removing the thing from your body. The word has much stronger effect and power. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? In Genesis chapter 2, God puts man to a deep sleep. And took a rib without a surgical blade. True of us? The only thing scripture told us was Adam was in a deep sleep. And God removed the rib. When he woke up, ah, he didn't do like this. Ah, that's pain. Nothing. He didn't even feel anything. He didn't even know that something has been taken. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He didn't know that something has been taken. Whatever God has not planted in your body, this morning they will be uprooted by fire. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any deposit of Satan in your body, I decree this morning, let them be uprooted by fire. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. So the word has surgical power. So it can cut off growth. I've witnessed that plenty of times. Just speak the word and anoint the growth. Before you know what's happening, the growth has disappeared. One lady had one dangerous goiter. She was so afraid. They told her that uh, she needs to get it operated. But she said she's afraid that she will die. I said, what do you want now? Am, am I a doctor? She said, pastor, just pray. I said, okay. I will pray this first one. And I will give you the oil. Hmm? Every night, just rub it and sleep. She carried the ball to go. Before you know what's happening, we didn't even ask how is she doing to know whether the goiter is still there. 
Surely, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. Guess what happened? After a while, Goita disappeared. I remember one of our pastor, the son, had one groot. So they've already, it was a Sunday that I was notified that uh, they want to go and remove this groot in their son's thing. I looked at it, I touched it. I asked him, Is he paining you? He said, No. I said, eh, It's not paining you. I said, Okay. I don't think you need to go for surgery. You see, how will the doctor feel? I say the doctor is free, is free to feel anything. I know somebody is angry with me. I say the doctor is free to free anything. So I say nothing do you hear? So I anointed the something. I told them they should be bringing me in every Sunday. I uh, keep anointing it. After a while, they didn't come again. And me too, I didn't ask again. The following month, the thing don't go. You remember your testimony? It, it growed somewhere. The thing just faded. The word of God is surgical. The blade is too sharp. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged knife sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thought and intents of the heart. So it can pierce through the marrow. Your bone marrow. It can heal your bone marrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I remember the testimony of a young man who kept playing a healing tape over his leg. His leg had a challenge around the kneecap. He kept playing. The message will be playing. You go and put the leg there. Did you understand what I'm saying now? Just like um, this is the radio now. Eh? This is the radio. He will now go and position his leg here. Leg be hearing something. <laughs> Every part of our being are designed to hear something. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do you know what? He collected his healing. He collected his healing. This is where needs healing. Oh yeah, the word be hitting there. So as the message was coming, it was hitting that place. Hitting that place. And it was free. Any stranger cause sickness in your body. I speak with authority from this altar. By fire be uprooted. If you are saying amen, say better Amen. I remember a sister. Let me try and see if I can remember her name. They said there was a lump on her breast. They have done one, they have done surgery on one before, and all of a sudden another one appeared on the other breast. So she was crying. She was afraid. So the doctor told her that if they don't remove it, that the team may grow and enter another one. And you know, doctors, they are, I like them more. But they can create fear. But what she told me, she said, um, if I go, I'm afraid. 
if I will make it. I say, ah, ah. It don't reach like that. She said, yes, sir. So I said, okay. I said, lump. I give her the oil. Lump, you are cursed. In the name of Jesus, you are not planted by God. Be uprooted by fire. So I gave her the bottle. Go. Go and be here anointing it. I saw the thing take melt. Disappear. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? The thing melt, disappear. The word of God has what we call penetration power. It can penetrate. We are microscope and stethoscope will not reach the word we reach. It is you that is dreading sickness. But there is something sickness is dreading. It's the fearing nature of the world. Sickness dreads the world. God wants you to be a confronter of sickness. You confront it. Whether they say it's biological or normal or spiritual, all of them now the spirit of infirmity, the controller. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, there is no normal sickness. Any sickness you can think of has a killing power. I might say something to someone. Have you not had someone die of headache? Is headache supposed to kill someone? Have you not heard of someone die of malaria? Is someone supposed to die of malaria? There is no common sickness. Every sickness has its roots in the devil. You tolerate it, it wipes it out. So your mouth, say with me, my mouth, my mouth. is supposed to be carrying the fire of the world. Your mouth. Jesus said, I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist. So you need to just be speaking the word. Keep firing the word. What you don't want, you don't watch. If you don't want it, don't watch it. Fire it. But the truth is this. You can't fire what you don't have. Many of us are dry as far as the world is concerned. Now the books of the month has been announced. Keys to divine health. The miracle meal. The power of the communion table. Fulfilling your days. The healing balm. We also have the other one, Satan gets lost. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The forces of freedom. But you won't read anyone. Light is a master over darkness anywhere, any day, any time. You need light. So engaging the world You are stirring up the spirit of God to carry out an operation. To carry out an operation. And this operation is to bring out every unwanted deposit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Unwanted deposits. There are also spiritual unwanted deposits. Every time you engage the world, all this food they are giving you to eat in the dream. You chop chicken, you eat fried rice. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Huh? Someone even told me that he was eating goat meat pepper soup in the dream. <laughs> and as he woke up, his mouth was smelling goat meat. It's a sign, it's an attack, it's a witchcraft device. Many don't understand it. You think it's normal? It's not normal. 
the operation of the enemy now have gone high tech. So you must engage the world. Whatever they have deposited in your body to demobilize you, to afflict you, fire of God by your word, flush them out. I remember one of our members, they gave her injection in the dream. And as she woke up, she fell sick. I said, if they gave you an injection in the dream, I'm going to give you an injection in the physical. I gave her the communion. I said, whatever was fired into your body, by the communion, I send them packing. The thing was flushed out. And I prayed one prayer. Whoever sponsored the giving of the injection, as the thing is leaving your body, leaving your body let it transfer back to the abode. Two days later, the father called him, why are you praying against me? Why are you praying against me? His father was a occultic man who was looking for who to go. The man had one jangatic building that nobody is living in. Nobody is renting, nobody is living in. The building is just there, fine. After that time, she stopped collecting money from her hand. Because I told her, if you must give him anything, anoint it. Anything you must give him, anoint it. That thing chop fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You must embrace the word. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saying, for they are life unto thee and hell unto thy whole flesh. Hence, he said, let not thy eyes depart from it, for they are life unto thee. So embracing the word is not optional. You must consistently, consistently, you joke with the word, you are finished. Whether you like it or not, there are, there are, there are challenges that doctors cannot handle. That is why when it, when it is beyond what they know, they say, do you have a church? Or do you have a pastor? Go and seek for prayers. They too, they know. They know that this one is not medical. This one, the arrow. Can a doctor cure arrow? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you need the word. So, embracing the word, do, do you know that every time you are taking in the word, your life is going through a cleansing? Your life is going through a cleansing. The purging fire of the word is keeping you purified. Keeping you purified. Servicing your whole system. Your whole system is getting renourished. Revitalized. Restrengthened. Your eyes not growing dim. You need the word. You hear people say they are going for checkup. They want to go and check whether their system is okay. But hear me, it is the word that satisfies you okay. So you must not toy with the word. Let the word be oozing out of your mouth. Every time you speak in the word, my body is blessed. My kidney is blessed. My soul is blessed. My heart is blessed. Whatever God has not planted by the authority in the name of Jesus, let them be flushed out now. You keep speaking the word. As you are saying it, your whole system they are hearing. Your brain is hearing. Your lung is hearing. Your kidney is hearing. Your intestine is hearing. Everything in you is hearing the word. Is hearing the word. And the more you engage the word, the more strengthened you become. The more longer you live. 
you will not miss it again. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. In this covenant day, of miracle marriage banquet. There is something that makes marriage glorious. And that is the force of favor. Say with me, the force of favor. Before I forget, all marriageable singles whether male or female. I will be anointing you in third service. How many of you want to marry this year? You see now they are checking September. You see your problem? They are saying no time. There's no time. But it must happen for someone. Somebody here must marry before December ending. So for those that will be waiting is in third service, I will do that. Nothing makes a marriage glorious like the favor of God. Like the favor of God. Nothing makes marriage, marriage flourish like the favor of God. Nothing makes marriage sweet like the favor of God. We are going to take, take a look at it in two perspectives for the singles and for the married. For the singles, what you need to be married is favor. Say with me, favor. When favor is at work, reasons are suspended. Conditions are put aside. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Should I say something to you? Do you know that you are somebody's favor? Do you know you are somebody's favor? No wonder it is not for the tallest. It is not for the one that has figure eight. You can have figure eight and be disfigured. It is for the favored from the Lord. If there is anything you should be pressing for, it's for favor. Tell your neighbor, favor. Whether you like it or not, north, south, east, and west, this force rules everywhere. It rules everywhere. But there is something that makes this favor to answer for you. It is called character. There are brothers with bad character there are also sisters with bad character. Maybe you don't know you are gradually disqualifying yourself. I heard Bishop Abiyah say, favor is not free. You pay a price for it. It's not free. It's not free. It's not free. You pay a price for it.
many are suffering character crisis in the church let me say this now someone can give you appointment but you need character to sustain the appointment true of us they can network you into marriage but you need character to stay in the marriage so if you lack character you will lack favor favor is likability acceptability your character is like a perfume it's like an aroma may you smell good if you are saying amen, say better amen. I say again, may you smell good. I want you to know that character is not a gift. You build up your character for where you are going. I don't care what anybody feels. Don't worry, you, you will soon care. I don't care what anybody feels or think. Just wait now. You never reach. When it is time for breakthrough, you will, you will care. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, uh, you will care. Am I saying the truth? Yes, the cheapest way to build character is to go through the fewness of humility. Be humble. What does it mean to be humble? Be teachable. Behave like someone going for that particular thing. If all the teachings that is taking place here is not happening to shape your character, you have a, a real serious problem. Serious one. Serious problem. Favor is an asset. People that have it, they don't play with it. Favor determines a flourishing destiny. If you must succeed in marriage, you need favor. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, in my first year in the university, The mama of our fellowship, she had four children. In, second, in her second year, the husband passed on to be with the Lord. But what shocked me was that in our third year, second semester, third year, we heard she's about to marry. But my mind was. For this lady to find a husband with four children, there is something about her. Two of us. Four, four, four. I saw her, her picture last month in our um, alumni fellowship forum. She's still looking genge. You know what I mean by genge? She's still bouncing, man. For her to find someone even with four men, there is something in that woman. I remember in her testimony, she asked the man, are you sure God spoke to you? The man said, yes. She said, oh yeah. She started calling them one by one. He said, see him. Are you still sure? The man said, yes. Let me tell you this. Favor is a limit breaker. If you carry favor, you can enter anywhere. They may say no to others, but not to you. Seek favor. He that findeth a wife. So what every man is looking for, 
in a woman is the one that is favored by the Lord, not the one that has figure eight. Stop deceiving yourself. I know figure eight is there, but it is not the primary thing. Should I say something? Do you know if a woman has character, even if she's short, she will still be recommended? Am I saying the truth? Even if she's leper, she will still be recommended. What you should be seeking after, Lord, make me a favor carrier. Make me a favor carrier. When you are a carrier of favor, forget it. Then go they rush you. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Say then go they rush me. <laughs> At that point now, you will now be saying, Lord, which of them is correct? It's no longer, Lord, give me a man. They will they rush you because they have found that you are a favor carrier. Lord, which one is here correct here? Am I saying the truth? <laughs> which one here has a what why vision? That is what you are supposed to be doing. Not uh, sending text message. I didn't hear from you today now. <laughs> you are wasting your credit. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? The one God has sent for you cannot sleep well without seeing you. How come you didn't call me? Throughout today? Are you okay? Tell your neighbor favor. If I be your father, I will change your favor frequency. Oh, maybe you didn't understand it. Favor has a frequency. When it comes upon you, things begin to change. If you are saying amen, say better amen. That is the prayer aspect. Oh. But please, I beg you, Start working on your character. A man of character will sell anywhere. A woman of character will be accepted anywhere. Start working on your character. That is the secret of marital breakthrough for singles. I won't forget Sister Gloria in one of our church. In Asaba Church, she was in choir. <laughs> Up to 11 brothers. You know what it means for a sister to get 11 proposal in the same church? 11. Oh, and almost all of them are workers in the church. I'm not joking. If you want, if you come, I'll give you a number. You call the person. So, after LCC, she came. LCC class, she came. She said, this is my problem. I said, you don't have any problem. We will do elimination. <laughs> so, finally, finally, that same evening, one of the brothers that, uh, not that I, I, I was aware, I was not aware, the brother just came, that, uh, so I, I can't understand though, this person, I told her I want to marry her, but, uh, she's not saying yes, she's not saying no. She should say one so that we know. I said, oh, you too, you follow. <laughs> so immediately he told me, and this brother, when, if I tell him, go, he's on the go. Very humble. But it's not, it's not the kind you can quickly say yes to. Because one of his legs is bad. It's not that he's uh, all that bad. Oh.
Wait now, let me finish. I now asked the sister, this person said he spoke to you. He said, immediately he spoke to me, I lost peace. That, I said, are you sure? Go and pray well. Oh. Maybe that's the one the spirit is leading you to. It's not that it's, it's, it's not disfigured. It's one of those people that were affected by those polio. Yes. So, I told her, sit down and pray over it. So the mother now heard about it. Pastor, stop. I said, I won't stop. <laughs> that there was somebody from Lagos. I said, I don't see the person in an empty conco. It's just deceiving your daughter. I said, how many times when you don't come, when you bring money, buy something for her? Rather than when you come and they give and transfer money. Which kind of in love with that one? I said, ah! Every day we'll be posing with my sister's car. My sister's car. That's how the matter ended. Finally, finally, Austin married Gloria. You will find favor. I say again, you will find favor. Please, my prayer for you, begin to deal with all the naughty, naughty attitude. It is reducing your chance. Begin to deal with it. It's reducing your chance. Talk, talk is reducing your chance. Are you know what I'm saying now? Some sisters are too arrogant. Re I repeat, arrow to greet. You may think it is little, but it's counting. It's counting. Be careful. But today, God will heal every part of you. For any home to enjoy the blessings of heaven, you need the favor of God. Favor is like engineer, you keep topping favor for your family to keep flourishing. Psalm 44, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their arm. Neither. Studio put that scripture. Did their own arm save them? But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadest a favor unto them. If your family must flourish, enjoy the blessings of God, you need favor. If there is anything you need to keep crying out, Lord, favor. Wives, hear this. If there is anything you need to keep praying for your husband, Lord, favor him. Before prince and kings, favor him. Not a... Uh, Holy God, no way in don't go now. You call him, I'm busy, I'm busy. Pray for him. Let him be favored. Your bad heart is winching your husband. Maybe you don't know. I'm telling you now. He's going out. Every time your number is busy, your number is busy. I don't know who you are calling. Your bad heart is winching your husband. So instead of him to be favored, you'll be meeting bad luck, disappointment. When he comes back, you will be frowning face. He will frown for you, frown for the children, frown for everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because you didn't wish him well. But as he's going, Lord, favor him. Lord, help him. Lord, make a way for him. Let him be accepted. Let doors open for him. Is a factor. Is a factor. Oh Lord, by your favor, change my family story. Favor is a factor. They got not. Whatever you will get, favor brought it. Oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full of the blessing. You can't be over full of the blessing. The more favor comes, the more you change level. The more favor comes, the more doors open. The more favor comes, the more opportunities are created. You need favor. Your family needs favor. If your family is not favored, there are some things that you cannot accomplish for your children. There are some things you cannot get done in your house. If it is by labor, your salary is too small. Your salary is too small. 
don't forget you have dependents. Relatives are here on the left. Relatives are here on the right. People are also having expectation all around you. You need favor to meet these needs. Stop struggling. Favor comes from God. When the torrent of favor is unleashed upon your family, I want to let you know, you will be flourishing when others are saying, ah, Nigeria, only God know APC, PDP. Your problem is not APC, your problem is not PDP. When God favors you, you will flourish in Goshen. There may be hardship everywhere, but not in your house. You need favor. Tell your neighbor favor. Favor is a creator of opportunity. Favor is the connector to help us of destiny. When favor is at work for you, men will not sleep until they favor you. You need favor. So if there is anything you need to be praying for for your family, favor, favor. I, lie, I remember in 2002, May, in one of the prayer sessions that we had in Kaduna, Bishop Abiyah said, pray for favor the way you are praying for deliverance. Pray for favor the way you are praying for deliverance. And watch out what will happen. God is the giver of favor. The Lord will bless the righteous and compass him with a shield. And compass him with favor like a shield round about. He will bless the righteous. You will not miss this favor. I say again, you will not miss this favor. I stand as the servant sent in this house to proclaim favor over your life. Say amen like a believer. But hear me, favor will not come if every day you and your wife, you are quarreling. Some husband and wife, they are keeping malice. Keeping malice. This one will sleep on this room. This one will sleep in this room. This one will say, some they are doing uh, north, south, and east, west. He sleep like this. This one sleep like this. If this one make mistake, touch the other one. You go withdraw from bed. Can't lie for grab. And when you wake up in the morning, Lakoshaka, the angels will say, Shut up. Lakoshaka, the angels will say, Shut up. Shut up. Stop deceiving yourself. You are closing the heavens against your house. Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The next verse. He said, Behold. The next verse now. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down upon the bed. Even Aaron's bed that went down to the skirt of his garment. The next verse now. He say, as the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion. For there, say with me, there. Yeah. The Lord commands the blessing. Even life forevermore. Even life forevermore. Even life forevermore. So can you see now? The naughty, naughty things you have in your heart against each other is blocking the favor, thereby no progress. And you know, whatever affects you and affects your wife afflicts the children. So some children are suffering now because of the naughty, naughty behaviors. Rise up to your feet. I'd like you to pray for yourself. Wherever you have blocked this favor, it's not which that is doing you now. Whatever I've made you to block this favor from reaching you, Lord have mercy on me. There is mercy with you. Whatever has made me miss the favor of God. Whatever has made me miss the favor of God in my life. In my family. Whatever is hindering the flow of your favor. Lord, I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. Help me. Spirit of God, help me. My marriage is bound to be glorious. It's bound to be flourishing. 
is bound to be glorious. Leko prekete. Jesus agenatelia. Is bound to be glorious. Lord have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord have mercy on me. Rako preketosa. Leando berej. Jekosizia. Whatever has made me miss it. Whatever has made me limit it. Rekatopa pre ketoriata. Lampodedo. Jegodede riga daga daga ya. Whatever has made me miss it. Lord have mercy on me. Have mercy on me Lord. Have mercy on me Lord. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me, Lord. Whatever made me miss it. Whatever made me lose touch with the favor of God. Have mercy on me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has made my family to lack favor. To the measure that we desire. Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Before I say this, do this altar call. If your wife has hurt you, and you are still tying her like a witchcraft in your chest, Lose her now. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you say, I no go agree, let me tell you, your suffering will not end. Though. Scripture says, Live peaceably with thy wife, that it shall be well with you. Every waking morning, bless your wife. Can you hold your wife in the morning and say, You are blessed? Your soul is blessed. Your spirit is blessed. Your body is blessed. Can you do that? It makes your prayer to be answered fast. And you too, if you know that you, are, you have some, some hurt against your husband, you are just keeping it like incubator. Please scatter it now so that the man can bless. Because if he does not, if he's not blessed, you go see the sufferer. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? All eyes close, all eyes bow. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus? Someone here wants to rededicate his or her life back to God. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus. I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer with me, wherever you are, come quickly. I want to pray with you now. Put your hand together for Jesus. I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, come right now. I want to pray for you and anoint you. Put your hands together for Jesus if you are coming. Please help me welcome them right now. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Come, come, come. Come. Let every person God wants to touch this man. If you are coming, come quickly. Come quickly. Someone is still saying, Should I go? Should I not go? Come now in the name of Jesus. to you shall you know what is cast out they have accepted jesus christ as their lord and as their savior 
as I anoint them today, the yoke is broken. The hold of the wicked over your life is shattered. From today I decree, you will not suffer disfavor again. You will not suffer disfavor again. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Put your hand together for Jesus. Turn and through hardship. Today I decree by favor, let there be divine intervention. By the favor of God, I command divine intervention. By the favor of God, I command divine intervention. By the favor of God, I command divine intervention. By the favor of God, I command divine intervention. God, divine intervention. Whoever is the favor carrier of your family, wherever they are located, I decree, let their loins be loose for your favor. Let their loins be loose for your favor. Let their loins be loose for your favor. This month of September, your name will ring bell for favor. This month of September, your name will ring bell for favor. This month of September, your name will ring bell for favor. Your name will ring bell for favor. In the favor of God, I decree your family levels will change. Your family levels will change. By the favor of God, new doors open for your family. By the favor of God, I decree your children gloriously married. Anyone family suffering collective captivity, by the fire of favor, I break that siege in the name of Jesus. By the fire of favor, I decree the siege broken now. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Watch out. Watch out. Beginning from this week. Beginning from this week. The doors that we are one shot against your family, they will open. By the favor of God, they will open. By the favor of God, they will open. So shall it be. Wave your hand unto God and give him all the praise.